This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so we start Chela Gimel, the third part, Perak Rishon, the first chapter of Chela Gimel, which is Be'inyan Hanefesh Upeulo Teha, the soul, and um, in English says its influence, Pe'ulot are its actions, meaning the role, the role that it plays. And actually, we're going to soon see that we have two souls, two different types of souls, and that one one of the two actually has many, many different levels, and it's constantly in a state of, of flux, constantly changing. So let's see. Let's begin. Aleph, right? Um, paragraph one there. We already explained Bechelik Aleph Paragimel in the first part, the third chapter. Inyan Adam, the aspect of man Shinimsa Bo Mashalo Nimsa Bishum Nivra Acher. Okay? Humankind, mankind is not a sophisticated ape, it's not part of the animal kingdom that is higher up on the food chain. Right, and all of the, all of the, you know, protect the what, protect the this, protect the that, which is all important. We have to protect, we have to protect the world that God has given us and appreciate it and not, and not plunder it and not squander it. So very often, a lot of these ideas are based on the mistaken notion that we are just animals. They're animals and we're animals. So because we're smarter, that doesn't give us the right to control or to or to be um, more concerned about ourselves. We're not just animals, right? We find what we find by humanity, we don't find by any of the other creations. The Hainu, which is Hahar Kava, which is this combination shenirkuvubo shnei mitzi uyot that we are a composite of two different mitzi uyot existences two different elements rechokim v'nivdalim ze mizeh which are so rachok so distant v'nivdal and so different one from the other which is haguf v'anishama we are a physical body that has, that contains, that joins up for the duration of our life, joins up with a nishama. And we'll soon see this nishama is not the living spirit that we also find in the animal kingdom. Animals are alive, more alive than, than a plant, let's say. They are alive. They have a spirit of sorts. But by humanity, there is a completely different level. On one hand, we have the existence of a nefesh, of an animal soul, we'll call it, a living spirit. The same that we find by all living creatures. Mishameshet lahar gasha v'haskalah. And that serves the role of hargasha largish is to feel feelings. Haskalah, intelligence. Hachakuka v'tivo, which is embedded in our nature. So we have that in the same manner that animals have that. Let's first discuss that before we get to the second one, which is very different. And this idea, this concept, this soul, this living spirit, which is in all living creatures, whom it siut echad dak ma'od, is a very... English very nicely, ethereal entity, meaning that science, medicine can't define, cannot configure what this living spirit is. 
We know when, it, well, we don't even know when it leaves. There are different definitions. Is there brain death? Is that actual death? There's a point when this living spirit is no longer there. But what is it? It is this ethereal entity. Nimshach uba bito chazera acharei hi kalto. It comes within the zera, the seed, after the point of conception, meaning if conception is going to be successful, then we have this new living spirit existing within the mother and the womb as a separate entity, as a separate, not separate, but as a different and additional living entity. Right, Every cell is alive, and by conception you have the conception of two cells. But that goes from being cells that simply reproduce cells that becomes this living entity that's going to develop into a complete human being. And it spreads out. Right, We know from our, our understanding of science how it reaches the different stages as it's multiplying. The Bamba so, Blast, I forget the exact names for all these things. Rabbi, so yes. I guess I'm thinking a little bit different, but I was just wondering, so, okay, so the cells, you know, they they um, replicate and everything. When When is, do we know, or you're going to get to it, when, this, when it's considered like a soul is actually attached to that? Hmm. <laughs> or Which we don't know. the topic of the day when it comes to abortion. That's right? what I was that's what yeah. I was, so, and I don't want to start all that. I just was curious. What? Yeah, well, from from a Jewish point of view, look, this living spirit is is beginning clearly as a as a separate entity. From a Jewish um, law point of view, Torah understanding, life begins once the baby, the fetus, enters the air of the world. Oh, it's not considered a separate entity. It's not entity. considered a full, it's considered potential life. And therefore, we are very, very careful, right? right. If and when we might allow for an abortion, but it's not considered to be murder. Okay. Once once it's, once it, it is born, then already, right? You know, if, if a mother's life is in danger from the fetus, then we will uh, dismember the, fe- the fetus inside and remove the fetus in order to save the life of the mother. And right? when does the fetus when does the fetus feel things? When does it have pain, or is that just I, we don't know? I, okay. I don't know. I'll let you go. I, I just know. curious. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uboneta okay. goof, and this body, whatever animal it might be, gets built. In a manner that is fitting for whatever species it might be. And that's how it continues to grow and spread out. In its growth. And it has these senses. And intelligence. In a fitting manner for for that species. Amongst all the different animals, there is tremendous dis- uh, differences in their intelligence. And the intelligence of human beings is very, very different than all of those animals' intelligence. But never out. This is all part of this living spirit, this animal soul. TV, according to its na- its natural essence, its natural parameters, its natural laws. Hamishamshim La. And according to all of the different parts of it that serve it. Each species according to that which it has, right? Some that swim, some that fly, some that that can digest from um, digest uh, grass, 
some that have the ability to tear apart other animals and eat them. And in this animal soul, this living spirit of mankind, also we have these different bichinot kochot, different abilities. Kigon, hadimyon, imagination, zikaron, memory, seichel, intelligence, ratzon, will, kulam kochot hanefesh. All of these are parts of what we would call the animal soul. Mugbalim b'gvulim yiduim, and have their boundaries. Upoalim b'drachim yuchadim, and they act in certain manners. Bet number two. So that's what we share with all the animal kingdom, with all the animals of the world. Amnami levad calls it. But besides all of this, in addition to all of this, there is another aspect. This existence, this spiritual essence, nivdal, completely separate from what we've discussed until now. And very, very lofty. And its purpose upon its entering of mankind. Hi, Dalit. Dalit, do you need where we are on, on the chat, or you've got your you've got your own book? Um, I've got my book. I had trouble okay. logging on today. I had to go use the code manually. Hmm. I'm not sure why it was different. Me anyway, neither. not to Sorry. interrupt. Okay, so we're on part three, chapter one, um, paragraph two. There is another, so besides the animal soul that we discussed in Aleph in one, there is another spiritual essence, another soul, separate, lofty. And its purpose in entering mankind is only to connect mankind, humankind, to its sharashim elyonim to its high spiritual roots, that we as human beings, we connect to, in that way that our actions bring about these different results, have this different influence, have this effect, that it moves, it touches, it affects the these higher uh, roots, He's how higher forces, the Koach Gadol, and we've got a tremendous strength in terms of affecting that, moving that around. So we, this connects us to the spiritual world, and our actions affect them. And through this, Nimshach Hashefa, Hanishpal Adam, through the flows the influence from above that comes down to the person from these higher sources some of them will then affect us in a spiritual manner as we've mentioned and some of them will affect us in a physical manner this lofty soul that Manheg at Nahag is a driver. Right? Nahag at Sars, we hear in Israel but next to all the bus stops. Driver, stop. Nahag, Manheget. It drives this lower soul. Upoelet boha pulota mitzdarchot. And it acts upon it in the manner that is necessary. Becholz man mizmaneha adam. During all the times of a person's life, all the times of the times that a person goes through. All based on that connection, that relationship that we have with these higher spiritual roots. This higher soul connects to the lower soul. Vatachtona and the lower soul, the animals, the living spirit, the animal soul, connects bechelakayoter dak shebadam 
right? We say the Pasuk says, Ki badam hu, ki anefesh hu badam. The soul, so to speak, resides in the blood. That is that pulsing living spirit that, that actually sustains our physical body and allows us to keep on living. Benimsu aguf ushte hanishamot. And therefore, the physical body and these two nishamot, these two souls, mitkashrim ze mze, are all connected or all bound one to another. Because of this connection, that this high, lofty spirit is connected to this physical, earthly body. With the animal spirit, that lower soul being the, the almost the interplay. Nimseit mugbelet. Therefore, as long as this soul is attached to the body, it is limited, it is bound in certain ways. And it's not able to interact fully. It's a fully spiritual being that is connected to our physical self. And therefore, even though it is a purely spiritual essence, and therefore normally it would exist and would interact in that purely spiritual realm by virtue of its connection to this physical body, its interactions with the purely spiritual realm is limited. As long as it has this body, this physical, this connection to the physical. Tahainu call yeme chaye adam, which is for all the living days of a person. Omit pa'elet mimase haguf. And it is acted upon, it is affected by the actions of the body. Lit kasher al yadam, that through the physical actions of a person, that soul is able to connect or habore yitbarach shemo, is able to, to connect to the light of the Creator Himself. So it's the actions of this physical body. That's what we say when we do a mitzvah, we make the bracha. What do we say? Asher kiddishanu b'mitzvotav. That we become kadosh, we become sanctified, separated, uplifted through these mitzvot. And it is the acts of the physical body that will allow thus this lofty spirit, this neshama, to have a greater connection to God above. O lintot mimeno. Or our actions can cause that our neshama will be turned from that. And to connect the kocho tatuma to different forces of impurity. And upon this is dependent what we've discussed in the first two parts. That the soul, the person is either he konina preparing oneself lashleimut for that perfection, hamutad that destined future perfection, or conversely, tragically, hitrachaka mimenu, or being distanced from that shleimut, vihi po adam. And this soul, this soul, manheget, once again, it works on that person. Umanheget, and it drives, it guides that nefesh atachtona, umadri chata, and aligns it. Vichokeket ba, and embeds in it siurei haskala, different understandings, wisdom. Vifi hachanata, according to the amount that a person prepares themselves for it. 
umoledet baha machshavot vaharatzon, and we have different machshavot thoughts, ratzon, will, desires, wants, kafi hatzad asher titelo, according to the way with which it guides us. But we affect the way that it will guide us, because our actions, as we, as you said earlier in this paragraph, will affect, are we connecting to God above, or are we shying away, turning aside from that connection? Dalid. And this will explain a little bit of our Moda'ani in the morning. Four. V'amnam. Afal pi shekaranua al derech klal nefesh achat, even though we've called it one soul as a single essence, a single entity. We said there's the animal soul, and then there is this nefesh, this soul, this lofty soul. Actually, it is made up of many different parts. show note. Each one on a different level. Ukvar nuchal omar. Actually, we're able to say it can be described as shenefashot rabot hein amid kashrot zo bezo kitabaot hashal shelet, like the links in a chain. That's all the different parts of this lofty soul. And there's the lowest part that's connecting to the the animal soul, so to speak. And then link by link by link by link by link. Until we ascend up to the highest points. Ukamosha mikulan nivne tashal shalatahi kamo shera uila, the same way that it's all the links together that create the chain. Kain mikol ela madrigot anabshiot. It's from all of these links, so to speak, each of these levels, interconnected levels, hanafshiot, these spiritual levels. Nivne is built That is what builds this divine soul, this lofty soul from above that we have mentioned, Shizakharnu. The Kulan Kishurot Zobazo, they're all connected, linked one to another. The Achrona. And the last one links to the Nevashatona, the animal soul. The lowest level of the divine soul links. To that nefesh tachtona, that lower animal soul that we call the living spirit, v'hatachtona, and that lowest, the animal spirit, badam, that connects to the blood, which is that life force, that living spirit, that life force, which pulses, surges through us, reaching every cell, and thereby keeping it alive through the capillary system. Every cell gets its life, so to speak, from this surging dam, which the, the animal soul connects to, and then the chains, the links of the chain, work their way all the way up. Ukvar efshar she yistalku kitzat menachalakim ha'ela bizman menazmanim. Our actions can cause, right? The Torah speaks about a penalty known as karet. Karet is cutting off. With this, we can understand that our actions can cause a severance from some of those higher links of this soul, that our actions have caused us to detach, decouple ourselves. From that link, it's possible she yistalku that there will be a removal of ksat min achalakim eila of some of these links, some of these levels. Bizman min azmanim at certain times. The ashuvu acharkach, right? It could be actions. It could also be based on time. We'll soon see. O yitvasvu aleya madregot or Levels can be added. But they will not be added in a permanent fashion, but they will leave. They will depart afterwards. 
there will be no indication whatsoever in the physical body. The lo yei we will not be able to see roshem, a an impression, a hint, a an effect. Mikol zeh, the goof klal on the body whatsoever. Yes, Cheryl. How do they know this even exists if we don't feel it or know about it? We're totally unconscious about it. Yeah, yeah. And that is what we say that Kabbalah, translated as mysticism, actually comes from the root word likabel, to receive. And these are teachings that were received and passed down, received by the Nevi'im, received by different Chachamim, and were passed down. And that's what Kabbalah actually is. And many of this is alluded to in the books of the Nevi'im, of the prophets, right? For those who were able to extract and decipher it. And otherwise we read it and we read it. You know, one of the things we discussed uh, in, in a different class, different format, is the idea of Torah Shabal Per, the oral transmission of Torah from Moshe on Sinai. And once that was going to be written down, when it was in danger of being forgotten, there was a great, there, there was a great, uh, a great challenge in that, because of, uh, a, a, a sizable part of the oral teachings were these um, very delicate, Kabbalistic teachings that each Rebbe would choose one or two select Talmidim who were worthy of receiving and not misconstruing these teachings. And those students, when they would become their Rebbe's on their own, in their own right, they would so too choose. But once it's going to be written down, it's available for all. So how do we maintain this discretionary passing of certain select teachings? And the way that it was done was through the Gemara telling lots of stories, lots of parables, that people who are not meant to understand what it is imparting, read that and say, oh, this is so silly. This is so stupid. It doesn't make any sense. Whereas actually it's being written in a manner that people who are silly and stupid, pardon me, right, will not understand it, right? So the, and in our generations, for whatever reason, a lot of the Kabbalah has become uh, opened up. They say before the coming of the Mashiach, we'll need this, this added light in the world. This added light will come to the world, and a lot of it is, is being spread. The Ramchal, the author here, see, he has many, many, many works that are purely Kabbalah. Mm-hmm. And, and, and the greatness of what he's done in Derech Hashem and in Mesilat Yesharim is to take Kabbalistic concepts and break it down in an applicable, understandable way for people like us, for for the lay, the, the lay persons. So how he knows that this this is Kabbalah, which is teachings that have been passed down from Moshe on Sinai selectively, and now are being and have been made available they were always available in different forms but the, what the ramchal did does over here in derech hashem is to create a very clear a very clear um structure of how these things work and where each thing is aligned and the effects that they have that is why this is called derech hashem the way of god how god interacts and interplays with this world how do we access this thing that we don't even know that we have? So Can that we know. Oh, good. We, we can't measure it. We can't measure how much soul do I have this morning? How much soul do I have at night? Right? One thing that we know is the way to activate this is through the Torah and the mitzvot. That's the way that we activate. And we'll soon see that there are also certain times when these things come about. So the can we tell, within, I'm sorry. Can we tell within ourselves whether we've been able to progress? Um, 
I don't think we can measure our souls, but I do think that we all can and do honestly appraise ourselves and say, right, am I connecting as I should be connecting or am I going through the motions? And I, 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 I add on to say, this is something Ravolvi speaks about very often, very clearly in his Ale Shore, that the nature of a person's spiritual journey is having our ups and our downs. It's not, it's, you know, it's kind of like that heart monitor, right? And it's only when it's a straight line, that's death, right? Life is constant, right? Ups and downs. Hopefully, we hope it's working in this fashion, up and down, wor- working its way up, right? But um, I think often we can sense within ourselves are we at a point where we are connecting in a in, in, in a real manner? Are we in a more rote, robotized phase and need to stir those juices and get ourselves get ourselves moving and feeling and connected? I think we often see it in our tefillah, in our in, in our davening. What sort of davening are we having? Right in our mitzvahs, are we? checking the box or is it asher kedishanu i think often we feel we can sense where where we are in our in our in our daily struggle because because that's what it is it's a daily challenge that we have thank you yeah so it's not more gosh it's not by the body the enamosifin o gorin lo bechiyut lo behergesh and it doesn't mosif it doesn't add nor does it detract, take away. Lo behergesh, lo bechiyut, not in the person's chiyut, uh, how alive that person is, or in their senses. El pu'ulatam, but their action, their function is b'mashu inyano shel adam ba'amito. That is in respect to what is the very essence of humanity. What is this human being's connection up to the spiritual realms? According to the degree that a person is able, and each person might have a different ability to connect to them. An example of all this, who in Yehoshua Yitera, we have that extra soul, that extra neshama, that extra soul Shabaa b'Shabbos Kodesh, that comes every Shabbos. There is, right? There is this extra, this we call it the neshama Yitera, the neshama Yitera, that added spirituality that comes with Shabbos Kodesh v'Holechet La, and then it bids us farewell. The Motzei Shabbat on Motzei Shabbos. The Ein Biatavlo Yitziatan Nir Gashim La Guf. Right? Do you feel it coming in? Do you feel it leaving? There is no physical sensation of it coming and going. Though we do have something that gives, we do have a weekly practice that gives a nod to this Neshama Yitera, and that is the Besamim, the spices that we smell. When we make havdalah, and that is meant to be like this, like smelling salts. When you're starting to feel faint, ah, you get some smelling salts, and now, and now you're back on your feet. So as that extra soul leaves Motzei after Shabbos, we take our bisamim as like these smelling salts in order to give us, uh, to give us that, uh, that that push, right, that rush, right, to keep us on our feet, but. Quite honestly, even without that, I'm not necessarily falling off my feet. I'm not. I'm not feeling it so much. Perhaps you know, aligned with what he's saying over here, that we don't feel it at all. Perhaps the the besamim is to remind us that we had that right to, to to make us aware of that which we had and that which then is taking leaves of leave of us. Right the the klal, the generality, because we said that there are links, 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 links going all the way, but sort of like, I'd say like the vertebrae, right? So we have lots of vertebrae, but we have five different categories of our vertebrae, 
right? So, so too, the klal, the, the general categories of these chelke, of these little, li, of these links, so to speak, of the neshama, mitchalek lechamisha. There are five different basic categories. The nikra'im, they are called nefesh, right? Nefesh is soul or resting. Ruach, spirit, or like wind, even we'll soon see. Neshama, soul, right? That's the term we use for soul. But it comes from the word neshima, right? Which is a breath. Chaya, living essence, and Yechida. Yachid is one, is unique. And the way the Nevesh HaChayim beautifully illustrates the three lower parts of the soul that are referred to as the Naran, Nun, Resh, Nun, Nefesh, Ruach, Nishama. So he says, if you look at the creation of humankind, so it says Hashem blew into the nostrils of Adam. So he says as follows, right? When you blow into something, what's the first thing you do? You breathe in. The air is then part of you. Then what do you do? So that's nishama, nishima, the intake, the inhale. And then there is ruach. Right? He gives example of a glass blower. Right? He, right? The person inhales, he blows out, and then what does it do? It fills that receptacle. Right? In the case of the glass blower, it expands that glass, liquid, that liquefied glass into which it's being blown. And there it rests. Nefesh. Shabbat vayi nafash. Right? Shabbat vayi nafash. And then one, one does rest. So it's, so to speak, Kaviyachal, God's. Inhale, neshima, that's the neshama, ruach, it comes into us and permeates who and what we are, and that is the ruach. So the lowest part is the ruach. Then when we start to turn the clock backwards to play it, to play it in reverse, what do we have? We have that ruach. We have that connection to God, so to speak, of that nishima. And going higher, we have that chaya, right? Which he defined as a living essence. And then at the very, very top, we have the connection to Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. We have that connection to what's called the yichida, to that singularity, to that unity. So these are not five links of the chain, but five categories of all of these different links that we have, five domains, regions that we have. And that's what we say in the morning, Moda Anilafanecha. We thank I before you. Shechazarta bi nishmati, that you've returned to me. Nishmati, my nishama. It's it's actually very specific, right? Parts of the soul, the lower parts of the soul, those remain in the body, but the loftier parts of the soul, they actually leave the body. The same way that when a person is has died, so the nishama, all aspects of the nishama, lift out of the body. So too, we, the, the sages say that Shana, sleeping, is one sixtieth of death. When we're asleep, we're also in an incapacitated state, right? When a person has died, the, the body can't serve any purpose at that point. 
it has finished its job. So at that point, the neshama leaves. When we're asleep, our body is in a somewhat incapacitated state. So there too, the neshama doesn't completely leave. The soul, all aspects, all regions of the soul don't completely leave, but they partially leave. And the morning we thank Hashem, Shechazarta be Nishmati, that you've returned to me, Nishmati, my soul, Bechemla, with compassion. As we say, Raba Emunatecha, great is your faith, God, meaning great is your faith in me that you have, re- you have returned this soul to me, to give me, that I didn't go transition from sleep, which is a little bit, oh, and 60 of death, into death. But rather, you've given me another day because of your emunah, God, your faith in me. Now, with this, he will explain, we'll see this next week, my friends, he will explain the phenomenon that people have dreams. And sometimes, usually the dreams are just this conglomeration of all these different things that we're thinking about, worrying about, right, or the mind is sorting all these things out, right, when we're asleep. But at times, a person can have a vision of something that's actually happening elsewhere and later find out that that actually was happening. Or a person can have a vision of something and later on in their life, it's almost a glimpse forward of something that will happen. And later on in their life, they will have that and they'll have, oh, right? We have all been here before, right? Cross yourselves, Nash and Young, right? You have this vision of something that will take place. Sometimes dreams can be very, very, very uncanny. And next week we will see his explanation of how that happens, why that happens, how we have a portal into this realm that is not bound by time and space. So that's what we will see next week, my friends. Okay, everybody. Yesha Koach, everybody. Thank you for joining. Next week we're on regular, and again, 6 o'clock start time. The week after is Shavuot. So we will not be, um, right, Shavuot, it will be Sunday, Monday. Saturday night, Sunday, Sunday night, Monday. So, but next week we're on in our usual fashion. Okay. Thank you, Rabbi. I look forward to you very welcome, everybody. Elizabeth, have a good night.